Dave Jacoby. I am a pastor at Messiah Lutheran Church in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. And it's a blessing to be filling in for Pastor Zobel today. I just shared a little with you. Uh, you might not know this, but I am related to your principal. I'm his son. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for welcoming him, too. All right, it's going to be a blessing. All right, so I do have some announcements uh, to, to start off the service with. First is this. Um, uh, Gary Stevens has passed away. Uh, his funeral is going to be uh, this Friday at July, uh, Friday, July 15th. Uh, visitation is at 10 a.m. and then the funeral is at 11 a.m. So it's this Friday, uh, July 15th. Visitation at 10, funeral at 11. Uh, also too, the voters meeting is this Sunday, uh, this upcoming Sunday, I should say, July 17th at uh, 9 10. So that must be after your first service, right? That makes sense. So um, the voters' meeting is next Sunday. Uh, Vacation Bible School starts uh, August 1st. Uh, you can pre-register in the office. That's coming up quick, so make sure to register for Vacation Bible School. Uh, the radio is sponsored today by uh, Jay and Carrie in honor of Luann's last birthday. So happy birthday, Luann. I don't know if she's in here, but happy birthday, Luann. And then the bulletin is sponsored by Jeff and Teresa in honor of Levi Wolf's birthday. So happy birthday, Levi. Uh, and then uh, finally, so Pastor Zobel is, is in Houston with the youth group until July 13th for the National Youth Gathering. So, uh, so prayers for them. I heard some updates. They've already found a barbecue restaurant, I guess, down there. So, so blessings. Hope they're having a great time. All right, then. So let us uh, then stand for opening hymn, hymn 869, with the Lord begin your task.
Holy God, you have commanded us, you shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, wholly pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. You shall love the Lord your God with your whole, with your all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. chapters 18 and 19. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt, where you live, and you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan, to which I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. You shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my rules. And a person does them, he shall live by them. I am the Lord your God. When you reap the harvest of the land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge, neither you shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the soldier. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. 
The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf, or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Colossians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as a need in the whole world. It is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you. Since that day you heard it and understood the grace of God and truth, just as you learned it from Epicrus, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father. Who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in life. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the gospel. Hallelujah. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among the robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise as he journeyed, he came to where he, so likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, and but a Samaritan as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. 
The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. This time we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 845, where charity and love prevail. Uh, 
But either way, right, you know, the point is this. Uh, typically, there is nothing you can do to inherit most everything. Uh, you have to be someone's heir. And then the one passing on the inheritance, it will usually they have to die. So to answer the question, no, there is barely anything you can do to inherit most everything. And as far as eternal life goes, well, there's nothing you can do. Instead, eternal life is a free gift of God for which Jesus died and rose for us so that us sinners might inherit it. It's not something we do to inherit it. It's something that Jesus did for us. But as it says in our reading, or as we learn, right, these lawyer, this lawyer, his motives are not pure. And he's looking to test Jesus. So Jesus plays a law, right, and what does he say? He says, well, uh, you know, lawyer, how, how do you read the law? That is, when he's talking about the law, right, the books of Moses in the Old Testament. Yeah, how do you sum those up? So the lawyer gives an answer. He says, well, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. The lawyer is quoting verses from the Old Testament, from the, the books of Deuteronomy and Leviticus. And he says, well, you got to love God with everything you have, your whole person, and you got to love your neighbor as yourself. So then Jesus says to him, okay, well, go and do likewise, and you will live. There you go. Now, so nobody's missing the gravity of what Jesus is asking this lawyer to do no one, bar no one, except Jesus, has been able to perfectly love God with their whole person and to love their neighbor as themselves. He is asking this man, this lawyer, to do what no man has ever done or could do. It is true, if you somehow could obey God's law perfectly, then yes, you would have eternal life. You would have committed no sin, and it says in Romans that the wages of sin is death. There you go. No sin equals no death. But instead, right, every man, every woman is born with a sinful nature. And then that sinful nature manifests itself pretty quick, right? Because we sin and sin. And thus it's true, right, when it says in 1 John, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that they deceive themselves, and the truth is not in them if they don't think they sin. So Jesus isn't lying to him. Obey the law perfectly, and you will inherit eternal life. But this is not within man or any man or woman to do. With man, this is impossible. But the lawyer thinks to himself, because he's a lawyer, right? What if there's a loophole in the law? That's what the lawyer's banking on. What if, to make loving my neighbor easier, what if I could just somehow limit my neighbor to those who I love? You know, then it would be easier to love them as myself, right? If I didn't have to include, you know, my enemies or groups of people I don't like. So the lawyer asked the question. He asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Because instead of turning to Jesus in his mercy, right? What he should have learned from Jesus when he, Jesus made it pretty clear to him that he's a sinner. Instead, when he tries to do this, lawyer, he tries to find a way to make what God requires, and what does God require, St. Martin's? Perfection. He tries to make what God requires easier. 
He wants to lower the bar of perfection. In other words, in our reading, what does it say? It says that he wants to justify himself instead of trusting in Jesus and his mercy. And right away we have a problem, right, in, in going to do what Jesus says, right, and to love God with your whole person. Because in wanting to justify himself, to make himself right, he's already messed up the whole thing. And that's because to love God is to trust in him alone and not yourself. It's to go for him for mercy and to trust in him. It's to love God because he loved you first in the person of Jesus. That is how one loves God. But this man is not there to love God. He wants to justify himself. And the only way to do that is to make perfection easier. So he asks, who is my neighbor? And to say St. Martin's, right? Who is my neighbor, right? That, that seems like an innocent question, right? Anyone here ask innocent questions? <laughs> seems like an innocent question. It's not. In fact, I'll tell you that that single question, who is my neighbor, might be the single deadliest question in human history. After all, if you really have to ask the question, what are your motives? What's your plan for those who aren't your neighbor? What if you say, for example, right, um, oh, black people, right, they aren't my neighbor. White people, they aren't my neighbor. Republicans, they aren't my neighbor. Democrats, they aren't my neighbor. Unborn children in their mother's womb, they aren't my neighbor. Where does it end? If they're not your neighbor, then it seems that anyone can justify any terrible thing toward that person if they don't consider them their neighbor. So I said, it seems like an innocent question, right? Who is my neighbor? But I ask you, St. Martin, has there ever been a question that has killed, hurt, enslaved more people than that question, who's my neighbor? Then to think of it, right, this lawyer has the audacity to ask God and Cardinal Jesus that question. The question he shouldn't have to ask. But Jesus, in his mercy, he answers the lawyer. He tells most well-known parables in the entire Bible, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Who is your neighbor? Well, let me tell you a little story, says Jesus. I think you know it well. I'll read it to you here. Jesus says, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and, beat him and departed him, leaving half dead. All right, so at the start of the story, we have some thieves and these thieves commit what we would call a sin of commission, right? So take you back to your catechism, your confirmation days. Maybe you remember this. What's a sin of commission? That's when you sin by an action. And in this case, right, well, they break both the fifth commandment and the seventh commandment. Thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not steal, right? So sins of commission. By these thieves, they leave this man for dead. And then what happens in our story? Well, two men pass by. A priest and a Levite. And a priest and a Levite, right, they would have been sort of like the church workers of Jesus' day. You know, those who you'd expect to know who their neighbor is. And God puts both of these, these men, this priest and a Levite, in the perfect position to help this man. And they blow it. They walk on by. So before I told you about the sin of commission, this is a sin of omission. This is when you admit doing the right thing that you're supposed to do and you, you don't do it, right? 
They were supposed to love their neighbor by rendering aid, but they don't. They just walk on by. And that gets us to the Samaritan. We have the Samaritan, and he does stop. As Jesus tells in our reading, he says, But the Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he sat him on his own animal and brought him into an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. It's really interesting that Jesus picks the Samaritan, right? He's the one who stops. Because that Samaritan would almost certainly be considered to that lawyer, right? The lawyer's getting the one asking the question. Uh, he also would certainly consider that lawyer as one of the enemy groups, right? Jews and Samaritans don't like each other. He would have been a person who the lawyer would like to limit out of being a neighbor, right? That's exactly that type of person. In Jesus' story, right, it's him, the Samaritan, who's the neighbor. To that man who's beaten on the road. All right, so Jesus then summarizes. He asks the lawyer a question, right, to, to finish off the story. Jesus says, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? The lawyer says, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. So there you have your answer. St. Martin, you're wondering who your neighbor is? Well, Jesus doesn't point to any particular group, does he? In fact, he shows us that, no, your neighbors are, in fact, precisely the groups you might wish to exclude from being your neighbor. These are your enemies sometimes, right? Like the lawyer. Certainly probably would like to do with the Samaritan. Instead, your neighbor is the one in need. Your neighbor is the one that God puts in your life to help, as that beaten man was to those three men. Love your neighbor as yourself. I think certainly when we consider that our neighbors are not for us to pick and choose, but they are the ones that God puts in our lives and that our neighbors include our enemies. We certainly realize that we fall, fall short of what the law requires in loving our neighbor as yourself. We further realize this when we realize that we can sin against our neighbor, not just by the things we do against them, right? The commission but the things that we were supposed to do and fail, right? That's the omission. In doing so, we fail to love our neighbors as ourselves, and we fail to love God who put that neighbor in our life. So in this, we have no way to justify ourselves, do we, when it comes to loving our neighbor? We don't have a healthy leg to stand on before God. The good news, St. Martin's, is that Jesus truly is our Good Samaritan. He is our neighbor, and he is our Savior. For us that don't have a healthy leg to stand on before God because of our sins, who were truly dead before God as that beaten man was, Jesus had compassion on us. He's picked us up. He's bound our wounds. He's paid for our care with his precious holy blood. He died for us and rose to life. We don't justify ourselves, but are justified for God for Jesus' sake, the ultimate good Samaritan. I think it's interesting, right? We have that neat detail, right, that Jesus... Uh, Good Samaritan pours uh, oil and then wine on the wounds, right? If you 
and just sanitize it, right? Uh, and uh, likewise, you think of it today, right? Well, Jesus pours out wine too for us, doesn't he? In the Lord's Supper and his body and blood for us in Holy Communion. In the same way, it heals us from our sin and binds our wounds until eternal life. That gets us full circle, right? Eternal life, right? Can we inherit that? Not on our own. There's nothing we can do. But the free gift for Jesus' sake. All right, St. Martin, so after all that, what does Jesus say to you after he heals you unto eternal life? What does he say? He says, go and do likewise. That is, love God by faith and love your neighbor without having to ask the question, who is my neighbor? Because St. Martin, you know already, your neighbor that person who God put in your life. Friend or foe, in group or out group, doesn't matter who. That person in your life, that friend is your neighbor. So go and do likewise, says Jesus, the ultimate good Samaritan. In Jesus' name, amen. This time we stand to confess our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the worlds, God of God. Light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism and remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to ask real briefly before we get the prayers, are there any prayer requests that you have this morning? Any prayer requests? For the prayers uh, this morning, I'll uh, in each petition say, Let us pray to the Lord, and if you can respond, then Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the ultimate good Samaritan. Help us to do as you say and go and do likewise, not asking the question, Who is our neighbor? but helping our neighbors in need, whenever you put those people in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, heal everyone who is sick and suffering this day. We pray especially for Verna, Marilyn, Jean, Walter, Jim, Bentley, Duane, John, Joe, Wendy, Jeff, Al, Jeff, Diane, Marilyn, uh, 
for Brenda and for Larry and Virginia and Jenny. For all these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Heavenly Father, give uh, comfort to the family and friends of Gary Simons after his passing. Give especially that comfort that only your son Jesus can give to his resurrection and the life. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. Hi, Father, we ask a blessing upon everyone who has a, a birthday this week. We pray especially for uh, Louie, uh, whose uh, birthday was this past week. And also for uh, my dad, uh, whose birthday is today, Doug Jacoby. For all these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Finally, Heavenly Father, we ask for uh, peace in Ukraine, that the war would cease. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here we see it for our offerings. Jesus has taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Do you now pray the post communion thanksgiving? Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you refresh us through the saving gift of your Holy Son's body and blood. By your mercy, enable us to love you with all our hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. You shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. To close with our closing hymn, hymn 553, O Christ our hope, our heart's desire. Oh.